What's up? Serena here from thriftdiving.com. So in today's video, I'm going to walk you through how I found this $35 table from the restore, from the thrift store, and I'm going to make it over. I'm not going to paint it because it's mid-century modern. Why would I paint it? I'm actually going to strip it and restain it and try to bring it back to life. Yeah, you know how I love thrift stores. I love thrift stores. So in today's video, we're going to strip it, we're going to stain it, we're going to put some top coat on it, and it's going to look fabulous. So if you want to see that, stick around and let's jump into it right now. So this table was in pretty good condition, but it had some loose legs and also the piano hinges that were holding the two sides onto the table. Those were loose and they were full of dust and dirt and it was just it was disgusting. <laughs> so whenever you're bringing anything home from the thrift store, thoroughly inspect it, thoroughly clean it, and then fix any repairs that you have to make before you're ready to refinish this. So this leg was coming off and I probably should have used a little bit of wood glue, but I just got two new screws, reattached it, and then that piano hinge needed to be tightened as well. So I got some additional screws and reinforce that and then the next thing was to get this thing ready for sanding and stripping now if you are doing a piece of furniture like this if you're trying to bring a piece of wood furniture back to life and you know restain it and have it be beautiful you have to decide are you going to sand it or are you going to strip it now you'll probably have to do both but i got started with just trying to sand it no chemical stripper and decided it's probably going to be easier to use a chemical stripper first and then sand it I'm actually just stripping right here in my she shed. I do have something on the floor so I don't make a big mess, but I left this on for probably about 15, 20 minutes, maybe even 30 minutes, and it will start to dry after that much time, but when you use your six inch putty knife, it should come right off, and it will take that layer of old finish off, and it makes it really easy to then sand it and get a smooth surface. So you'll see that I'm working here in sections because I don't wanna do the entire table because in my experience, that can be very overwhelming when you've got all of the stripper on one huge project. So work in sections and then when you're done, well, of course you're discarding it into this box, call your county to find out where you should actually recycle this or how you can recycle it. And Here's the thing, you can also use a sander. So I did test this section to find out what if I just used a 40 grit sandpaper and went very slowly with my orbital sander on the aggressive setting, how will that work? <laughs> and here's a couple tips. Whenever you're using an orbital sander, I'm speeding things up here, but you really wanna go about one inch per second. You don't want to press down too much. You don't wanna to go too quickly because the, the quicker you go, the more swirly pigtails you'll get in your wood. So make sure that you're going at an even pace. But what I did find is that by doing the layer of chemical stripper first, it really did a lot of the hard work. And then coming back with a sander was a lot easier. I didn't have to go as aggressive. So we'll talk a little bit more about the sanding in just a moment, but definitely use a chemical stripper first, one that's safe, and then follow it with the orbital sander. And that walnut veneer was looking so beautiful by the time I was able to get all of that existing finish off. And I could not wait to get the oil penetrating finish on there. It was gonna look so beautiful. I knew it, I knew it was gonna look gorgeous. So you'll see here that I'm adding some chemical stripper to the body of the table. And this is the problem with mid-century modern furniture when you're trying to refinish it. The top is going to be typically a really beautiful veneer, but the body is gonna be a different wood and it may not match exactly. I think this might've been oak. And when you put that oil penetrating stain on it, it may not look exactly like the top. It's gonna to look slightly different. And I was keeping that in mind. Now, typically I don't like to sand and refinish legs because it's difficult, right? It's not a flat surface and I just find it difficult to sand and to really get a good finish on legs, but we were gonna try it. <laughs> I was being adventurous. So I'm using my orbital sander on that part. And I find that it's helpful to have different sanders that can reach into different places like corners. So you might need more than one sander. So once the legs were done, it was time to go over everything with a slightly finer sandpaper. Here I'm going over it with about a 120 grit sandpaper. And then for the final sanding, I'm gonna do that by hand. And I'm using about 150 grit sandpaper. You can go up to a finer 220, that's fine, but finish it off by hand and then wipe all of the dust away. 
Now you definitely want to use pre-stained wood conditioner. This is so important. And let me point out that I'm using the oil based one. There is a water base and it really depends on what finish you're going to do. I'm planning to use an oil penetrating stain. So I've got to use the oil based pre-stain. And this is important. It's sort of like the foundation when you're applying your makeup, right? It just sets the stage for an even smooth coverage. <laughs> That's how I like to look at it. And so you'll see that it's drying here. You don't necessarily want it to dry. You want it to be wiped off in about 10 to 15 minutes. So give it a good wiping and then let it thoroughly dry. Follow the instructions on the can. And then you can move on to the next part, which is actually applying the wood finish. This is the oil penetrating. And again, remember I said that body is not gonna be the same type of wood as the veneer as the top. So it's gonna look a little different. Probably think I could have done maybe a, an even better job at sanding these legs. <laughs> but honestly, I don't care as much about the legs. I'm more concerned with the top and that's the part I need to be super beautiful. So let's go on to the top. I'm gonna to be using a lint-free towel. You can use either the lint-free cloth or you can use a paintbrush and wipe it off as you go. Either is fine, but look at that color. Like it looks amazing. And you can actually apply this in one step. One coat, you're gonna get a good finish. And if you want additional layers, you can do that. But with one coat, that's really all you need. And you can actually get started on putting the second coat in two hours if you want, because it dries that quickly. And just seeing that wood, oh, I love it. I love refinishing furniture. It's just amazing. Now I did let this dry for 24 hours before coming back with a water-based top coat. I'm using the Minwax Polycrylic and don't shake it up, just stir it. You don't wanna add any additional bubbles into the finish. And you'll see here that I'm using a paintbrush and I'm going in long strokes. And this is what you wanna do because if you, I mean, it's gonna dry amazing. It's gonna look great. It's gonna look a little milky as well. Don't let that scare you. You, you didn't ruin your furniture. It's going to dry clear. I like the satin finish, um, but as I was putting this on, I really thought maybe I should have gone with something a little bit more glossy. I like the way that looks, but typically I will do like a satin finish. And I'm using these long strokes and I'm coming off of the edge, making sure that I'm not letting it pull and run down the corners or the sides of the table. And also you'll notice that it's drying pretty quickly. Now I'm speeding things up here so you can see that progression, but generally you don't wanna rework the same section over and over. Just apply it, let it level itself, and then move on to the next part. So for me, I just added one to two coats to the legs and to the body, let it thoroughly dry, and then I'm coming back with a 220 grit sandpaper very lightly because I'm gonna add another coat. You could just do one coat, but I like to do two or three coats. Go over it lightly, make sure that you fully wipe down all of that dust, and then you can do that same process. And the next time that I started adding a different, you know, another coat, my son came in and he actually wanted to help. And so I thought this was a great opportunity to teach him how to do it. And surprisingly, he did pretty well. <laughs> and there were some parts where I wanted to kind of jump in and say, no, make sure you're wiping here. Don't go to, you know, I, I started giving him some instruction, but for the most part, he did pretty good. And I was just kind of shocked that he was even interested in doing it. I mean, it kind of makes me want to like put a paintbrush in his hand again and say, here, try this project or let's paint this or let's refinish this. So anytime your kids decide that they want to help out, let them help, <laughs> even if they mess it up. Now, the last part of this was to do some of the wood filler in those little cracks you see there in the veneer on the edge. Now, this should have been done before I did the oil penetrating stain and the two coats of top coat, but there was a different product that I thought that I was gonna use and I ended up not using it. And so I should have done this first. And here's the thing, wood filler, it says it's paintable and it says that it's accepting of stain. The stain is never gonna be a great match. And so just keep that in mind that it's going to look like there's wood filler there, but I think it's gonna be a better option than just leaving it with that bare wood poking through the veneer, the cracked veneer. I had to do another coat of top coat, but that's okay, because three coats of top coat usually makes it really, really smooth and builds up that finish quite nicely. And you'll see here that it is still visible, but again, do you want these two dark marks or do you want those light cracked areas showing through? And I think this looks much better. The last step was to collect some of this spray paint in a cup 
or a bowl and then use that to just finish off the tips of the feet. This is, I think it looks like there had been metal caps there on this leg, on these legs, but over the years, I guess maybe they had fallen off and I thought a little bit of spray paint, a little bit of painter's tape, and now it looks a little bit more finished. So remember, this was a $35 table from the ReStore and we totally transformed it. It looks really nice. The, the surface is smooth. I love that I did three coats of the satin and that stain just, I mean, the original stain was horrible, <laughs> but this stain just looks rich. I did two coats actually, but even with just one coat, you can get a really nice rich color and it's not spotty. You see that I've got a nice even color and that's because we did the pre wood conditioner. So remember you have to follow these steps in order to get good results. And if you're new to refinishing furniture, it's okay to make mistakes. You can start all over and it doesn't have to be perfect. Mine doesn't look perfect, but I can tell you it looks a lot better than when I first started, <laughs> when I first dragged that into my she shed. Now remember, this is going to be set up for an engraver that I'm bringing into my she shed and I need a lot of space. There's a lot of parts to this. It's at least four foot wide and <laughs> it's just gonna be a behemoth. But anyway, this surface looks great and be sure to come back next time because we're always doing something fun here at Thrift Diving. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next video.